policies. So as part of this training module, we are going to see how to define SD-WAN SLA profile, forwarding profile and policy and how to create a match condition to ensure that customers' data traffic going from a branch to DC in case of a network congestion, how it can dynamically shift from one link to the other. So let's understand first on how this is achieved. Right? So this is a three point three pointer policy definition. The first task is to create an SLA profile wherein you're gonna say what is the acceptable latency loss or jitter that this application can hold before it reaches the DC. So once you have defined that, the second task is to define a forwarding profile. So what is a forwarding profile? A forwarding profile is a policy where you map the type of links that should take the traffic. It can be an MPLS link, it can be an internet link, or it can be an LTE link. So you're gonna say whether the traffic is gonna be uh, active backup, active active, or a per packet based traffic forwarding from branch to DC in the forwarding profile group. The third task is to create, uh, so now, just before we go to the third task. In the second task, so once you have created a forwarding profile, you map an SLD profile to the forwarding profile. Right? So basically you're gonna say that these are the priority links which I'm looking at, and this is an acceptable SLA which I need between the branch and the DC which are using these links. The third task is to define a policy. So what you will do, do in this policy? So, right, so we have uh, some 3000 applications and some uh, close to 83 different URL categories available. So based on that, let's say a customer wants to use SAP and Oracle as a critical traffic. You map that SAP and Oracle as a critical traffic. Now, within that policy, you bind the forwarding profile. Right, so you understand the uh, overall uh, hierarchy, right? So first we define an SLA, second we define a forwarding profile, which is basically defining the link priorities. Then you map that forwarding profile to a policy. So basically, you have effectively created a uh, SLA profile, which defines what is the latency, jitter and loss, define it to the links, what are the links that, that should take my traffic. Then you map that link to the application profile, which matches which application to, should take these links. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, just before we jump on to un, uh, defining the policies, let's also just quickly uh, run through what is SLA probes. Right? So, SD-WAN Versa uses Y1731 based IP SLA probes to measure the latency, jitter and loss between uh, a branch to branch tra traffic. So, by this is a default mechanism, as soon as a site is onboarded, SLA probe is configured between the site and all the other sites if it's a full mesh and uh, site and to the hub only if it is a hub and spoke architecture. So based on the architecture type you define, the SLA probes are by default defined. So the default uh, SLA measurement is every 10 seconds it's going to send out a probe. It is going to wait for three times to de uh, detect and define that this path is dead. So this is a measurement default mechanism. So uh, this does not contain another SLA profile which you define. The default, uh, so that is whenever you create a template, this is a default SLA profile which will be there. To tell the box, up to 30 seconds is gonna take to tell if my data path is down. Now again, you guys can have a question, 30 seconds is too high, I understand. 30 second is a default measurement protocol, I will tell you why. Right. So, there are different kinds of scenarios you see in the field. You can have a direct link down scenario or you can have a logical link down scenario, meaning a SU or a base station is down, but your SU is up. So, your physical link is up for the SD-WAN branch. So, it's going to take 30 seconds in that case. But that doesn't imply whenever you define an SD-WAN policy. Within the SD-WAN policy, you can tell in what number of seconds you want to switch the link between the uh, between the detected timer of latency or loss. Next. SLAs can be defined per forwarding class, means uh, we have uh, four forwarding classes. So one is uh, forwarding class network control, forwarding class expedited forwarding, forwarding class assured forwarding, forwarding class uh, best effort. 
So these are the four classes we have. And for each class, we can define an SLA probe. But however, based on design recommendations, it's only suggested to use uh, expedited forwarding for data and network control for control traffic, which is towards the controller. So let's talk about SD-WAN SLA monitoring. So, uh, so just before I get in here, right? So we're gonna go through some theory stuff over here, and later on we're gonna move in and I'll show you live steps on how to define the same in the uh, SD-WAN director. So SLA monitoring is used to measure the performance. Like I told you, it is by default it is running 10 into 3. Uh, it is gonna send out a probe every 10 seconds to measure the performance, and then it's gonna report back the information. So based on that, you can define a policy based on latency, jitter, loss, MOS score, and it can even give you link utilization. So link utilization is not captured as part of an SLA probe, but the local device itself will get to know what is the local link's link utilization. So we, for example, a customer buys a 10 Mbps MPLS circuit from us. We define on the box that this is your uplink and downlink bandwidth is 10 Mbps. Now the box gets to know that this is my 100%. 10 Mbps is my 100%. Right? So now you define an SD-WAN policy that whenever the link utilization reaches 85%, you start shifting the traffic. Which meaning your 8 Mbps of link utilization is done when the traffic will start uh, offloading to the second link. So you can define policies like that as well. So uh, we can cover this. Uh, yeah. So this is a, basically a page where uh, you go and define an SLA profile. So this is an exact page that you're gonna see in the direct. So here you have uh, packet delay variation, circuit transmit utilization, receive utilization. So that's basically your link utilization graphs, uh, link utilization options. Right. Next is maximum packet loss, maximum forward packet loss, and maximum reverse packet loss. As part of the initial deployment, we are only gonna use maximum packet loss for defining SLA, uh, let's say, uh, we're not gonna wait more than 1% of maximum packet loss before shifting the link. Maximum latency, so I've just defined it as 100 milliseconds, but however, based on customer's uh, application standpoint, you can define a lower latency as well. But ensure that the latency which you define over here is actually meeting uh, the normal underlay latency between POP to POP. Let's say you are building a latency of uh, within India. Right? So it should not be more than 80 milliseconds. Right? Uh, in, in, worst, in, in worst case scenarios, we're going to not exceed more than 40 milliseconds. So in th those cases, you cannot define uh, from uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, the latency is 20 milliseconds. It's not going to happen. Right? So you have to make sure that you understand the pop to pop latency first and then define the SDMN policies accordingly. Okay, so now the first step is done that uh, we discussed in the initial slide. You define the SDMN policy. Now you're going to define a forwarding profile. So forwarding profile uh, has various fields. So here it has a field to map the SLA profile. So here I'll map my SLA profile, which is called as latency. And here you can see a recompute timer, violation action, and load balancing option. So recompute timer is nothing but the amount of time the SD-WAN device will take to keep the traffic in the secondary path. Let's say uh, on the primary path, it observed a loss. It shifted the traffic to the secondary link. Right. Now, to how many... To what amount of seconds should I wait in the second box before second link before shifting the traffic to the uh, first link? Right. So that's where we define it as a 300 milliseconds, as a 300 seconds by default. So it's uh, we can define it to a minimum of 10 seconds and not less than that. SLA violation action. Let's say uh, some customers would say uh, for voice traffic, they would say if it crosses more than 40 milliseconds, drop the traffic, do not shift it.
further so that at least I get to know that the traffic is dropped, uh, the, there is a link level issue. In those cases, we define SLA violation action as dropped. Load balancing option default selection is per flow, but we have option over here to define it as per packet as well. So eval in the bottom there are uh, some uh, five uh, check boxes: evaluate continuously, enable symmetric forwarding, enable gradual migration, reorder, and turn redirection. So uh, evaluate continuously is basically to uh, enable the local box to keep evaluating the WAN link to understand whether uh, the stability of the link is back to normal or not. Enable symmetric forwarding knob ensures that traffic taking from branch to DC, let's say it is taking MPLS1 to MPLS1, right? even on the reverse path, it is going to take MPLS1 to MPLS1 only and it not, it's not going to take MPLS1 to MPLS2. So uh, some applications in earlier stages, people who are familiar with firewall will understand about the asymmetric traffic flows, right? So this knob was introduced to uh, address those uh, issues for the customers wherein uh, there was traffic path from uh, asymmetric paths. But SD-WAN basically eliminates the concept of asymmetric routing because for us, it is only two different access paths to reach a destination and the underlay or the customer's data traffic doesn't know which path it's taken to reach the destination. Everything is taken care by the sd tree. Next, we are going to select the circuits. Like uh, as I discussed, we are going to select a priority one. So, um, so you are going to select all the WAN links as part of priority one. If you want to load balance all the traffic within the available WAN links, or you can say link priority one for MPLS one and link priority two for internet in case if you want to make the traffic as active backup. It's as simple as that. Right. So now we have defined the SD-WAN forwarding profile. Now you go and create a SD-WAN policy. So here, uh, so by default, the SD-WAN policy name is a single name. You can only define one policy name. So it doesn't make any big difference. Right? So you just define it as a policy or a default policy. It's not going to make any difference. Next, you can define multiple rule names within that policy. So it means, so uh, people who are familiar with firewall, you will apply multiple policies uh, on the box and so forth, right? So here, the terminology is a bit different. Here, a policy mean, a policy name is, is does not have any relevance. The rules within the policy has relevance. Okay. So based on that, uh, you go into rules under SD WAN policies rules. You define the rule name, you define how the traffic is coming, whether it, the traffic is coming from LAN. Uh, so basically SD-WAN traffic steering rules is only for traffic from branch to DC or branch to branch. It is not for branch to internet. Next, you define a match condition. You can also match a condition like any services, services meaning FTP, uh, ICMP, all these are services. You can select that under the services list tab. Next, what type of application should I match under the policy? You can uh, go to the applications tab, click on the plus sign and you will get all these uh, options available. Next, you move on to the uh, last tab, which is for, and then you select what is the action which is allow and forwarding profile, you're going to select what is the forwarding profile name. So this is this will conclude that this policy is applied. So once you commit the changes to the branch, this will be applied. Okay, so this is this is how the summary will look like. So you go to the configuration tab, go to templates, device templates, select the template name which you which your device belongs to. So the template name is Villa Parle. Under this template, you have Interf networking, services, objects and connectors and others. You will click on services, select SD-WAN, click on SLA profile. So there's an already an SLA profile configured. Let's look into it again. So here I've defined the jitter as 100 milliseconds, link utilization as 86% 86, 86, 86 
maximum packet loss acceptable for me is two two percent, and I've clicked OK. Right, so I've created an SLA. Now I go into forwarding profile. And I'm going to add a forwarding profile name. So, critical apps forwarding profile. And I'm going to call the SLA profile over here. And I'm going to say that the recompute interval is not 300 milliseconds, 300 seconds, it's 20 seconds. I'm going to enable the knob evaluate continuously and select the load balancing option as per flow. Then I'm going to go into circuit priorities. Click add. So you have priorities over here, so you can define up to eight different priorities. I'm selecting priority one. Click on add. I'm going to select the name. As I told you, you can add as many number of links you want to use for pushing this traffic from branch to other branch or branch to DC. Click on OK. So now you have defined the number of links which are part of priority one. If you want to do an active active load balancing, if you want to do active passive, you can only have one access circuit as part of one priority. Then click on OK. So that's created. Next you go to policies. So under policies, as I say, all, uh, since I've already defined the, the name as default policy, I'm going to go into the rule. And uh, so there's already some traffic map. So I've created a policy called as policy one. So the, there's no match condition. So if there is no match condition, it's going to apply for all the traffic. So here I can define applications. So uh, as part of the recent releases, right, so they have added application filters, meaning there are some uh, application filter types where based on high risk, web applications or browsing or games and so forth. You can either select from that or you can just select your own applications. So let's say I'm going to uh, take business traffic as an application filter and also SAP. Oracle. These are my critical applications. Now I'm going to the Enforce tab. So here you see forwarding. Here I'm going to call my forwarding profile. And click on OK. My rule is created. You go to the appliance. Select the template name, Villa Parle. I click OK. If you see there is an option over here which shows that the device template state is out of sync and the device has been modified locally. If I click on the view button, it's going to show me what is the difference between my template and the device level changes that someone has done. Right, so these are the changes that is before commit and after commit. So we get to see what, what will be overridden if I do these changes. So then we can take a corrective action whether I should make this change or make the correction and then make the change. So I can select this and click on OK and the template will be committed. Okay, thank you everyone.